Hello everyone, this is Leon Vanguard of Vanguard Spinning and today I'm doing something a little bit different for this video because there's a lot to it and I wasn't sure how much I should cut out and how much I should remove as most of my videos are pretty hard to uh, decide that in. How much do I want you guys to watch through every single detail? How fast I should actually scroll through all of it? But for a video like this, I kind of wanted to keep as much of it there as possible to show you how much work it actually takes to get one of these vices restored. But instead of just including text in order to show you everything I'm doing or discuss what's going on, I'm trying out this uh, vlog style video here. I tried a lot of different tools to get this thing cleaned up and I went from flap discs on the drill here to wire brushes and flap discs on the grinder. It was a pain no matter what you use, but the most effective tool is definitely using the wire brushes to get most of that gunk and scale out and then using the flap disc to actually cut away at some of the deeper actually set in rust and pits in there. As you can see I'm revealing some cracks in that small uh, dead plate right there which I will weld up. I don't have any carbon steel but I don't believe it's carbon steel anyway so I'm just gonna make that look nice and make it a good dead plate again but that'll be later. Right now we're just trying to get down to the bare bones get all the rust out, get all that old grease that's caked in with dirt and here, especially, having these little w wire wheels on the drill, it makes life so much easier. I've since this uh, video I've gotten a die grinder, and it'll be much easier to maneuver the die grinder in these spots. But if you don't have a die grinder, the drill works just fine. And as you can see, getting into all these grooves with the wire brush, it gets rid of that dirt, gunk, grease, and rust easily to get back to a nice clean surface. Our goal here is in perfection. It is a cast piece, so it's, it won't ever look pristine and super clean. But we're looking for a piece that is just free of all this crap on there. <laughs> While going in here with the uh, angle grinder or the flap disc, I'm actually making a lot of these casting parts look much cleaner, much smoother than they were designed to be. Because, uh, they didn't really need to make them that clean, but I decided since I'm at it, might as well make it look nice and smooth on the parts that are at least easily accessible and most viewed. This piece especially, you want as smooth as possible. This is the mounting point where you're gonna be putting the tool on and, the, and that rest where it slides around, I was paid a special detail to. I want that groove on the inside, that lip on the top. I want that to be super clean so I get a nice smooth action. Everywhere else can be rusty and crappy, but that right there you definitely want clean. So I spent way more time on that part than any other part on this entire build probably. Oh, including this, the actual shaft that goes up and down that slide as well. While there was while there, while there was and is a lot of play in this vice back and forth, I still want to make sure that that slide was as clean as possible. Getting that pin out was actually quite easy. Getting that pin back in was kind of a nightmare. In case you were wondering, this is a six inch vice. As that prominent six is shouting out to the world. Now 
here I'm using some metal descaler spray and scrubbing the, all over the piece with this. I'm trying to get both the surface to be back to bare bones, dry and free of oil, and then gonna be painting it. It's a pretty abrasive and toxic chemical, so I am wearing gloves. More or less just not to soak my hands in it. If you get a little bit on you, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I just didn't feel like soaking my hands in it. Instead of just welding that spot of the dead plate, I'm taking a piece of half inch plate. I'm going to be welding that to the face to give me a nice solid block to hit upon. It won't be a true anvil, it'll just be a dead plate, but I have an actual anvil in my shop. This is for some small odd tasks. I was wondering how well this thing would weld since most of this piece is cast. But since I'm not going to be putting a lot of pressure prying or prying this piece away, I'm not too worried either way. And it seemed the weld did penetrate and did take very well. The old vice handle was very d well damaged and definitely not what I wanted. I did some research on this vice and kind of heard these vices like this and decided the length I wanted. And I have some very, very high tensile strength. Um, carbon steel bar ball bearings from a uh, huge drive shaft or something that I've had been saving for no reason. It'll be acting as my <laughs> stops back and forth for the vice. I'm just using a wire feed to weld carbon steel onto mild steel, but as I'm planning only to hit this mildly with a hammer, I'm not too worried about pen how, how well the actual weld's going to hold. It's not structural. I do have high penetration and I do have a lot of weld on there, so it'll definitely hold for my needs. And since I've had this vice now for about half a year, I've had no problems with that at all. Nice smooth action, back and forth. Get a nice acid etching green primer on there, tipping off all the sections where I don't want paint. And here I'm prepping all the little small pinions that hold the vice still and clamp the vise from shipping back and forth. I'm cheating a little bit with this one. I'm tapering the head of that shaft and hammering it onto a bolt. Sorry, a nut. Smooth up the heads. The tricky part of all this was welding the head on while it's already through the shaft. Can you see there. Put a few passes with the welder, you get that nice and clean, to make it look as one solid part. Any metal on metal parts that move back and forth, especially like this, you want to be well greased. This is probably too much grease, but I have, I don't plan on taking it apart again, so I'm gonna just going to put a, put a lot on here, <laughs> put it all together, and wipe off all the excess later as it comes oozing out.
this bolt here is what holds that giant uh, nut <laughs> on the bottom of the plate. Again, greasing that up, greasing that up. Now, I'm not going to lie, this uh, part of the video I'm kind of skipping over about a half hour to an hour's worth of frustration and a lot of hard time getting this pin on. Because once I got that in there, I put the spring on it and the little pin that holds the spring tight, pulling the whole assembly together. And wow, it was a literal nightmare to get that on. But I finally did get it on. The actual teeth of the vise were pretty messed up, so the thing here is me making new soft jaws out of aluminum for the vise. I do have another uh, leg vise in the shop, so if I have to heat things up a lot. Instead of using a, two tr a true countersink, I just made a job a much larger hole instead. Primarily because I didn't have a countersink available in the shop, so I just made a much bigger hole. This is a real satisfying thing here. The action is super smooth. Those two balls on the end make it really easy to turn back and forth. We have a beautiful amount of clearance here in this vise. Jaws aren't perfect, but I might fix those up later. Bolted on a new dead plate right here. Just mild steel, but it should do the job. Seeing how as I have my anvil over here for all the hard work. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and hopefully my commentary made the uh, time fly a little bit better. Often projects like this aren't very fulfilling to watch, but once once you see a project completed, it's, it's wonderful to see it all come together. And oftentimes, when you're trying to do this yourself at home, just getting over these, like, oh, what tool, what part use this, what part use for that, often gets a little annoying as well. So hopefully, if any of you out there are going to be restoring a vice of your own, some of what I was doing here might help. If you guys have any questions, please leave a question down in the comments. And uh, see you guys in the next video.